What's going on, y'all? Welcome right on back. Welcome right on back. Here we is. Here we is, y'all. We're back. I'm back. This is Lady Nika in with a reality recap. This time, I'm bringing the Black Ink Crew. This is Season 3, Episode 6, Rikers Islands. I mean, Rikers or Rehab. That's what it's called. And we gonna, um, we gonna go back to these dirty niggas. <laughs> We see old shit, Duchess and C's, they all in the black ink parlor, and C's recalling the story of Puma disrespecting, you know, his shop last week and the party. And C's, you know, he tells about the whole fighting and everything. So C says to us, you know, he say, well, he was doing a little research. That's how they always find that shit, y'all, research. Well, he was doing a little research and found out that Puma does not own Ink 124. It's apparently owned by somebody named Joe that Puma used to work for back in the day. And the way Caesar was explaining it was if uh, the guy used to pretty much, I mean, Puma used to be pretty much the dude's little lap dog or whatever. But, you know, he said he ain't going to say nothing about it right now. But, you know, he will be using that information on a payback tip later on. So they joke a while for a minute, you know what I'm saying, and no shit leaves. Next, we see somebody named Tia Monet. Now, maybe y'all, maybe it's because I'm a little older than most. And I I don't know who this hoe is, okay? But whoever she is, she's apparently someone famous. And she come into the shop to get her a tattoo. And while her and um while she back there with seeds, you know, they get to talking about people fronting on who they are and people who don't live in their truth can't be you know, they live a facade most of their lives. Who they pretend that they are, who the public sees them as is not quite who they are. And she said that, you know, that happens to her a whole lot. And C's automatically starts thinking of Puma again and the lie that he been saying that he owned this place. And, you know, at the party, all the stuff he was saying about how his production is so much better than the next man's. You know what I'm saying? Everything he does is so much better. C's thinks about that. Well, she gets her uh, tattoo done. She gets a whole sleeve. Y'all, I, I admire people that can do that shit. Because you're just not going to. See, I told y'all, I'm not right with needles. But that's constant poking my motherfucking skin. No, baby. Mm -mm. I done been stuck too many times. I wish a bitch would try to put a tattoo on me. We going to be fighting. But anyway. Okay. Oh, shit goes to see his bell bonds. Y'all. <laughs> Now, this man, I know he got the drug test every fucking week. He go there, you know, first he late. But he gonna say it's better than not showing up at all. I guess you're right, but still, bitch, you should be doing everything them people told you because you could be locked the fuck up. He get them people a whole bunch of motherfucking fool, foolish ass excuses as to why he late. And, you know, they already looking at him like they don't trust nothing that come out of his mouth, but... You know, they go head on and they drug test him. And they tell him, do you want to read the results? So he goes over there and he read the results, you know. And at that point, child, before he read them results off, I'm thinking, I know. I just know motherfucking well this crusty, dusty bitch ain't positive again up in here. I know damn well this dumbass boy hasn't gone through, hadn't got out of that trouble he was in just a couple weeks ago and turned around and did this same stupid shit again. But yes, he did, boo. That motherfucker tested positive. And the bondsman asking him to tell him the truth. And he says, hard. So they put the handcuffs on this motherfucking ass. And I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I'm sick of this crusty bitch. Let his ass go and go to jail so we can stop having to look at him every week. But no, no. Some more shit was going to go on. But right now, we're going to go to Puma over there at Ink 124. And Teddy came by to see him to find out, you know what? What made you go off like that at that party? Because in truth, you know, he really was wrong. You know, he came in there real foul on that boy, trying to disrespect him and then to throw the food down on the I mean, that kind of shit get your ass whooped. Well, he said he don't like Caesar no more. And Teddy said he feeling some kind of way about Caesar too because when Caesar got with Duchess, he forgot that all of them worked as a 
team to get Black Ink where it is. And it's like now that he has some fame and recognition and the shop is growing, money is being made, he forgetting about the people that was with him when they couldn't, when he couldn't hardly pay him nothing. And Ted go back to talking about a time where he was only paid twenty dollars a day, but he was with his cousin because he believed in his dream. And now that Seas has reached some of his dreams, he not thinking about all the people that supported him, and he feeling some kind of way about it. So, and they say it got worse when he got with Duchess. So y'all know that that that's leading up to some shit. We only on uh episode six, so we got time for a lot of drama. All right, next we see Anya coming into the bondsman off, and I'm like, well, what the fuck? Now he couldn't call her when he was going to jail, but I guess this time he gonna call her. So I didn't know what she was in there for. Come to find out, the bail bomber called her, cause he want her to try to talk to. Oh shit, they don't really want to send old shit to jail. You see what I'm saying? But. It's a problem. He got a serious problem. And it's like the more chances he get, the less, you know, the worse he becomes. It's not like he take a, you know, a, a slap on the wrist and he all right the next day. He get his shit together. This motherfucker has a history of doing this shit. And the bad bombing, you know, they basically shit. They spill tea on that motherfucker and tell her, do you know why he was arrested last time because he came up and hit with drugs? And she was like, no. And and the bell bomb started telling him, do you know how dangerous what you're doing is? You could have been stopped and you was with her and the baby. And that caused the whole problem. And then Auntie went on to say, you know, they could have came to my house and you got that shit on you. And then they're going to bust in my house. They're going to, I'm going to be having problems with child protection with my, my child. All of that. You're not thinking why. You're not thinking about what you do. And the bell bondsman asked him a real serious question. If she ain't knowing she's supposed to be the woman that you ready to spend the rest of your life with, why she don't know? What is it that keeps you from telling her the truth? You seem like you got somebody on your team that really love you, so what's the problem here? And they tell him that, you know, they gonna give him a chance. He got a choice. He can either go to Rikers Island right then that day, or he gotta go to rehab. And so he said he going to go on and go to rehab. I know the fuck he is. Because he don't just look like, well, I don't know. He, he'll be all right. So next we see C's and Teddy. And they meeting up and shit. You know, he getting in Teddy's car. And C's saying that Teddy been acting funny with him lately. And he's heard that Teddy been going over there to uh, Puma shop and spending a lot of time there. And he's not really been at the Black Ink, right? So Ted Caesar tell Teddy he his cousin and he don't want him hanging with Puma no more. Well, Teddy, you know, in this instance, I got to agree with Teddy. I'm a grown-ass man. Now, you and Puma may have issues, you know. Y'all may have issues. I hate when motherfuckers do that. If we a clique and we hang out, the minute one person in the clique, you know, disassociates himself with one of the other clique members, you expect everybody in the clique to turn their back on them. Well, yeah, to us, Puma was an asshole last week, and he deserved you not being friends with him and not wanting to fuck with him no more because of the disrespect that he showed you at your uh, reopening of your shop. Of course, I get that. But you are, Ted is a grown-ass man. I know he wear the motherfucking onesies and snuggles and shit, and you can get confused, but that's a grown-ass man who makes his own decisions. And he told him, cousin or no cousin, you can't tell me who I can hang with. So, C's get mad and get out the car, tell him he just don't understand. And Teddy was like, whatever, you know, you can't tell me who I can fuck with. Point blank, period. Well, next scene, we see oh shit Ed talking to Donna, and he telling her about the incident at the Bell Bond shop, you know, and that he's wanting to, uh, you know, he waiting on a bed in order for him to be able to enter the rehab. And she, that is, she admitted on this episode that they have a sexual relationship, but she also saying that they have an artistic, creative one as well. And he's saying he don't know if he and Anya is even moving in together because she been living ever since she found out what the bell bonds and them people said. So he don't know where it's going. And Donna is over there trying to make him see where she would be a better fit for him. Okay? 
even though in that same conversation, Donna and, uh, and it said that Donna and Anya supposed to meet up and have, you know, a conversation because she won't understand who this bitch is and why, you know, why she, first of all, living with my man and why is my man acting like he can't, you know, she was, she has some questions. So, you know, but the bitch still was saying that she a better person for old shit though. Lord, I don't know how she, well, she must ain't be, well, look at her, look at her. She probably, uh, Next, you see Puma. He's supposed to be spending the day with his daughter. He gonna take, you know, take her to work type of thing today to allow Quanah ass to get out there and do this photo shoot with Sassy and Walt and them, right? Apparently, Walt is a photographer and he's really serious about trying to get some of his images out. And he's asked Sassy to come down and be, you know, a model and, and ask Quanah to come in and help him get everything set up. And she comes and you can tell... Uh, Quanty want to do something. She feel incomplete. Being a mom is a beautiful thing, but I can understand where she coming from. That's not that. That's not all that I have to offer this world. And I do say that maybe she should have thought about all of that before she became a parent and a wife. But you know, if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Okay, so. We see oh uh Puma going to see this dude and he want it's a business opportunity for him but he can't really discuss the shit with the, with uh oh shit I mean with Puma because the little girl was everywhere y'all she was falling all down on the ground leaving out the room running around and stuff you know he couldn't really conduct no business so he said he's the primary breadwinner in their house right now and so he was taking the little girl back to her mama. And that's what the fuck he did. He showed up at this set and took that little girl straight to her mama. And Quanny is livid. Walt kind of aggravated too because he was like, man, for one day just to let her see what she can do. You couldn't just hold this down for one day so she could take care of that. Then, this, you know, I'm paying for this time out here. I need to be about my business. I can't just waste my time and the time of the people I got out here working with me. That's unprofessional. You know what I'm saying? But... She brought he brought the baby and the baby wouldn't stop hollering because once she got around corners, it seemed like the girl got the little girl went in overdrive with the hollering y'all. She just was hollering and nothing could be heard or got done with a little girl hollering in the background. So Quanny upset, but she goes to Walt and tell Walt, you know, because he done brought this baby down here, I'm going to have to go and leave and take my baby home because she's not going to act right. But you could tell it was hurting her feelings. And my question is, y'all, we at, let me see where we at now. We at episode six. How many of y'all think she going to be gone before the uh, end of the season? She going to leave him because... I understand what he was trying to do, but if you gonna sit there and tell her that you'll watch the little girl and let her go do that, then you should have made necessary preparations to have somebody watch that little girl if you knew you had a business meeting that you had. You ain't just get that bitch. You been had it. But see, that's irresponsibility on his part and, and, and lack of lack of fucking um teamwork on his part to make it work. If you the primary uh, breadwinner in the house, then you should have had the coin to pay somebody to take care of that baby for the day so you and her both can motherfucking go out and, and you know, do what y'all have to do. But he's so selfish, y'all, he didn't think like that. He figured he could do it. And then when he saw he couldn't do it, he didn't want to go through... How, how many times you think she probably went to handle some business and had to take that holler that little girl with her and had to deal with that? She didn't make her alone. She shouldn't have to deal with her alone. In that instance, I was not on Puma's side yet again because I felt like there was some stupid shit. But at the same time, Quanah, again, I have to say, girl, you know, I don't got nothing against you, but bitch, you knew what you was marrying. You knew what kind of dude he was. So before you got married and had babies and all this old bullshit, why didn't you, you know, make sure you... They don't think, girl. Ooh. So now she got to go home with the damn baby she made. Well, we go back to the Black Ink and, and uh, oh shit is saying that he has to report to rehab tomorrow. They done found his ass in bed. Well, y'all, Puma come up in the shop and everybody like, why if seeds was here? You know what I'm saying? You done act the fool and y'all done almost had a fight and you here 
And it comes by now. Oh shit. Now, oh shit, know what the hell happened between uh Caesar and Puma. Why the fuck would you invite him there to tell him about you going to rehab? You could have called him on the phone or you could have carried your ass because you ain't got to go to the next day. You had enough time to run your ass on over there and tell him whatever the fuck you wanted to say. You wanted to tell him if that's what you wanted to tell him. But it was a boom in your face because Puma been knowing you so long. He know that this shit ain't going to work. This is another failed attempt to try to get over. And that's what the fuck he called it like he saw it. And to be honest with you, I don't think your ass going to do no better either. Any motherfucker stupid enough to go into his bondsman where he know they going to search his ass and drug and test his ass. You go up in there and you not only dirty, but bitch, you got the dope on you. You mean to tell me on your way in you ain't have a bush somewhere where you could have wrenched down there behind that damn bush and pushed it down up in the little dirt, covered it up, and went on up in there, took your test. Been clean to take the test and come your ass on up out the motherfucker, get your shit and go. I mean, that's just common sense to me. I mean, damn. And I don't do no motherfucking shit like that, but I'm just saying, I, I know what the, how it go in the streets. That shit was stupid. If you stupid enough to do that, bitch, you, you lying about, you faking on this here, even though you claiming like you real about it, but in a damn way. And, and you know, while Puma was telling him the truth, which is, I don't believe you. Scott kind of got a little irritated by the time I you supposed to be encouraging and uplifting. But, I mean, how many people going to encourage and uplift this bitch? Because he acts a fool every chance he get. And then Kathy come in there with Achilles. And she has to see him. And you know he's still in his feelings because he done found out that ain't none of his son. Even though he said that he would, you know, still going to be the child's father. But he's still not quite feeling her yet neither. So instead of him being mature and talking to the woman because he know he finna leave, you know, and letting his son know right then and there what was up from his mouth, not his mama's mouth. He gets up and walks to the back. And she was like, well, so I got to say this out in the public. He was like, oh, I don't care and walk to the back like she wasn't no motherfucking body. See, that's that's another reason why I know he not ready to do no growing. We may not see eye to eye. You did lie to me. But I've accepted this child, you know. So I may not fuck with you, but if I know I'm going away for uh, extended period of time, and we, we still parenting this child together. When you walked in that building with that child, I wouldn't have been acting no asshole with you. Even though I might have felt like doing it, the maturity in me would have allowed me to have a conversation with you because I need to get you right on what the fuck is going on and explain this to my son. But he acted a fool and walked to the back and she, she came back there and she telling him that his family loves him and they support him and they understand and they rooting for him. And that by him taking that step there to go to rehab on his own, that's one step closer to his salvation. Well, I guess that must have uh, wrung something in his motherfucking mind because he came out and he explained to the child, you know, what the situation was and that... um. You know, he'll be gone for a while, but he'll be a better person when he returns. And let me make sure this is it, because I don't want to leave no shit out. Okay, so next scene, his ass is in the car headed to the rehab place. And he speaks with his kid again, but on his way there, you know, you hear him saying that he hopes that this works out. He, he wants to do better. And, you know, even though... <coughs> I'm fighting to keep this voice for y'all tonight. <coughs> mm. oh. Even though he's saying that he want to do better, y'all, deep down inside, I do hope that if this boy really do have a problem, that he can go there and utilize those services to his benefit. I really do. I hope that he can somehow find himself and realize that, you know, your fuck-ups now don't just hurt you. It hurts your children as well. So, we're going to hope and pray that that's the situation. Anyway, y'all, my boy, my <coughs> throat is starting to sting again. And I know that means it comes a fit of coughing and then I'm going to lose my voice again. So, I'll be back in Wednesday night with um, Empire and the Mob Wives. And thank God it's the season fucking finale of the Mob Holes. I'm so glad. But I hope that, you know, 
the show didn't give me a whole lot tonight. I gave y'all as best I could. It was more about just being real about it. This time I wasn't trying to be as funny. It's just being real because we was we was talking about some real issues and one of them is drug use, especially when you got children. So, you know, hopefully he'll get his shit together. But I'll be back here next week this time with you guys with, the, you know, another installment of this bullshit. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos. And I'll see you guys again on Wednesday night. Peace.